Click, buy, deliver. With remote purchasing from the two-time Motorcycle News Dealer of the Year, Colchester Kawasaki. Proud sponsors of Chasing the Racing. Three, two, one, <laughs> and welcome back to Chasing the Racing episode 102, and we're joined by... Take two. The, yeah, take, <laughs> take two. two. Take two. <laughs> joined by the two... Uh, Peters or piggies? And, <laughs> sorry, yeah. one piggy, one Peter. Peter Clifford, and uh, we return of the piggy. How uh, we're down at uh, Snetterden. <laughs> and... <laughs> That's a bear of mine. That, right. Sorry, right. We had we had a bit of a microphone <laughs> issue before this got going, and yet again, Pete, Pete, like Pete. This is going to get confusing, isn't uh, it? We got we got piggy, piggy here. Immediately reacted like a professional, straight again. <laughs> and three, two, one. We're live straight at the camera, down the lens, <laughs> and wave to his fans upon fans. You like me, me fam. Yeah, yeah. Who's your, God, who's your one fan? Don't say your mother. She's always oh, there. There's loads, there's hundreds of thousands. I tell you what, Pete, you've seriously got a huge, like a huge mantle to step upon here. He is the most uh, popular man in on the show, a hundred percent, hundred percent. I'm, I'm quite happy to just sit here and listen to the <laughs> <laughs> you'll soon get fed up <laughs> and for, for those people that because uh, we've had Piggy on the show but for the for our new maybe new listeners or viewers or whatever who aren't aware uh, Piggy's my mechanic and also uh, all around nice guy on, on <laughs> least on least to Dom nice as well yeah right? yeah on least to Dom yeah and, uh, <laughs> who's, who's kept me busy today definitely oh we are the claws are out already yeah, <laughs> yeah they are and Peter Clifford is a, a currently the electronics engineer for Fayho Racing but uh, yeah. I'm, a, I'm aware that there's a lot more strings to your bow, which we'll we'll get on and. Um, oh dear! <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't listened to this show, Pete, we well, literally have no <laughs> boundaries. Really, we're not governed by the BBC. So any stories you want to spell, cr- uh, spill, sorry, not spell, uh, crack on. <laughs> And just just to start with, we're down at just to sort of set the scene. We're down at Snetterden, which is a thunder sport meeting, and uh, Peter's here with Peter Hickman. And uh, doing a little bit of uh, you know practicing on his uh, on his uh, stocker, and also Dom Dom's been out racing. So uh, do you want to quickly just go through from today? It's um it's been a, a wet and miserable day, and uh, do you want to just quickly h- how have you gotten on? Oh, not not very well. I think I think I think we should skip hundred percent past my little stories here. No, we've no, got, we got a uh, trophy. Ah, uh, we got a bit of trophy hunting. There we go. But unfortunately, yeah, yeah. I do want to quickly ask you as well because we've, we've talked about it a lot on the podcast. The um. Airbag suit, first first oh, God. explosion today. There you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, right, Pete. This is the crack. I bollocked up, right? Totally bollocked <laughs> up. So anyway, I put it on Paul in the super twin class. So there's the DC yeah. lad said, "There you go, Dominic. Have a go and be pride and joy. Don't scratch it, right? No problem, lads. Don't you worry." So anyway, mm. I went off from the start line, totally balls up my start, magnificently. So red, like what's what's the saying? Um, a red rag to a bull situation. So there's me yeah. going hard, like my eyes glazed over. And I went, just just go get back the lead. Went into the bear, uh, turn two. Starting to sound like you here. Turn two, turn one, two. What is turn two called then? They all have I'm different names, sure. don't they? Go on, listen. Turn two to turn three, and it, it's just the hairpin, and then you're going back onto the, does, the old back straight. But does it not have a, like, it every make... every circuit has, a, has yeah. a name, doesn't it? I don't it? think that one actually does, does it? Yeah. I don't think so, no. We'll we should it, come up with it. Yeah. We'll call it Dominic's cock up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Them rumours coming to play at me down Dom- south there, you are. Dominic's cock up. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but there's another story. <laughs> there we are. You keep quiet, you. So anyway, so anyway I tipped in uh, turn two thinking I'm the man. I've taken the lead back. I came over on the left hand side with what what have I done? I've become a heavy handed whore on the throttle. Open it up and um, you can't high side super twins for all our listeners yeah. out there. And I just went boom. And I tell you what, that airbag suit from RST is absolutely brilliant. I, 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 at first, I was a total skeptic. I'm not going to lie. At first, I'm thinking, how does this little computer in your, it's yeah, like, really. in, like, what's it even called? I call them speed bumps on your levers. So what is the actual original design behind them? Is it's it... just aerodynamics originally to stop the air building air pressure curling around the back of your helmet. Is it not I thought it was something to do with like bracing your neck or something, or is it oh, like no, double, is it literally aerodynamics? I think, the, the original design on it. I think um, it does it would stop you if your head went back, it would obviously that would stop your neck from going further back than it you know, it would would like if that wasn't there so I presume it must have some sort of benefit but yeah he's, oh, oh, he's a bit of a pub quiz 
pub quiz question then. When did that start getting introduced into I medicine? Was, I could have sworn, like, sworn it was Barry Sheen that brought that in. No, was that Barry um, Sheen had that smooth, like... No, yeah, after Barry, was I it? think it was well after Barry, yeah. I think mm. Pro- it? Probably in the early 2000s. Because mm. all of a sudden that. just seemed to happen, that, yeah. didn't it? Yeah. You know but what I mean? Everyone just had these bumps on the back yeah. of their levers. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was a, originally it was an aerodynamic thing that they worked out in the... Yeah. In the in the, or something in the wind tunnels, yeah. Right. I've, I've always wanted a, a drink in mine. No, when you see it, like they're yeah, dunes races. Yeah. Rich Can't. energy. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's good, isn't he? Good, isn't he? <laughs> he's good. He's a right corporate sellout this far, isn't he? I like his style. But no, but, but, no, but the endurance lads, you can get the, the drinks and the yeah, you pumps, can't you? Yeah. Can yeah. I just ask, uh, when the airbag goes off, is it, did, I mean, it all happened so fast. Did it happen as you were oh, going no, through the air? Him, him, oh, it, I'll tell you what, right, so it came round. Cold left hand side of the tire, cracked on the throttle, and it fully came round to the side. And you know when you think this is either gonna come back or not. Yeah. And it was a case of it didn't. Now, when the ha- you know when the handlebars snap away from you in a high side, it was literally like my hands let go. And the second my feet left the peg, then, yeah. I swear to God, it was like someone with a beanbag gun and just went. <laughs> Like that, like, woo! Like, 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 but, when did you? But no, honestly, but no, but that initial, like, yeah. you, like, your brain goes into this slow mode, doesn't it? When you're in a crash, you're going, mm. this is happening. Your brain just goes into a different part of you, going, brace yourself, son. You're in for a bollocking and in pain. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what yeah. goes in. Yeah. And, um, and it was literally just like this, yeah. Jesus. And it was like an immediate thing. But I tell you what, the second I hit the ground, like, I landed full chest first. Right. My neck yeah, stiff yeah. now, like, you know what I mean? Because it was the more exertion of like, you know, you think just trying to keep your head up. Mm-hmm. But I tell you what, it, like, I'm not just saying this because we're sponsored by RST, but yeah. it would have been a collarbone or anything else in it. Like no yeah, pain yeah. left to be left. The technology's brilliant, isn't it, really? Mm-hmm. But how, how it works. But yeah. how that ECU picks up the fact that you've literally vacated the vehicle midair is just... How long does it stay blown up for? By the time I got up, um, picked up my dummy, um, wiped away the tears, um, I was fully deflated, like my wallet. Uh, <laughs> was it a full, like, do you feel like, no, when you see spacemen, like, all blown up like that, is it, vi- visually, can you see the airbags going oh, where, where, Basically, I was as big as your head when you won that British Championship, you know, you're like, you know when you can struggle to fit through doors, Chrissy? That's how big I was, I was massive, son. Holy massive. <laughs> That was what they were like. <laughs> Colin McGregor and a couple of carpets. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but um, anyway, thanks so much for coming on the podcast, Peter. I really appreciate your time. And um, we'll get the chance to sort of look through your career and how you got into it. But as a as an electronics engineer, a lot of people might think, well, in British superbikes, they don't have, um, you know, like no track control and stuff. So mm-hmm. do, do you want to just briefly give a, um, an overview of what you do as a job now? And then we can talk about your sort of history. Uh, well, basically now, it's just data and electronics is what I, my area that I work on specifically with the team. So I, I uh, basically analyse the data that we take from the bike and then liaise with the crew chiefs and the all-ins engineer to look at what we're going to do changes-wise uh, for the chassis. And then I'm also looking at the engine management side, so making changes to the fuel in the throttles uh, engine braking strategies, so working all that. And although we don't do, um, we have a very limited electronics package, obviously, as you know, with the, the Mortex system in Superbikes. But for me, that probably, although you're taking away the elements of the rider aids, you're trying to build some of that into non-rider aids. Mm-hmm. So you're trying to make sure that the throttle connection is really good that the engine's got a really nice linear drive to it, that everything's working, the engine braking's working well. So you're controlling the throttles and everything, just making sure that it can get, the rider can get the best out of the bike. So, um, although we do less, electron, there's less parameters that we have to work with, mm. we probably have to be more detailed in what we actually do it's, to it's, be able to get the best out of the bike. Mm. Whereas, you know, when you start incorporating things like anti-wheelie traction control and everything else, you can mask a lot of issues. Sure. We can't, with a, in the super bikes, as, as you know, it's very direct. And basically what the rider asks for, he gets. Mm-hmm. So you, you, you have to get it right. Mm-hmm. So you're just working on things, making sure that everything is 
um, as positive and easy to control as you can because that's the biggest thing with a superbike. A lot of people say, you know, well, it's a, basically a stocker with a bit of extra power. It's not a superbike. It's a very difficult animal to, to ride and to master, as, as a lot of superstock riders have found in the past. Mm -hmm. You know, that you can be really good on a stocker, but then you jump on something that hasn't got the rider aids, and then they start to struggle a little bit, mm -hmm. and it starts launching them. And you get people... Um, um, Scott was a good advocate for it, actually, when he came back from MotoGP onto the Scott Ray Superbike. Right, yeah. He came back, I was talking to him one night, and he said how it's, it really helped his riding because he's had to learn how to ride a bike again. Right. Because he's got complete control over it. Whereas, you know, if you're just, if you, you're breaking hard, you hit an apex and you just crack the throttle and just let the ECU sort it all out. Mm, that's mental, Then it's a different it? thing to... Thinking, well, if I give it an extra 10%, I'm airborne or mm. whatever, you know. So it is, it is there's really, a lot of things that you have to work it's, on. It's yeah. mega that we've got the, those rules in BSV. And when you, th I remember when the first were talking about like getting rid of the, all the electronics and straight away there's um, people are thinking about the safety side of things. Mm. But if you looked at all of it, I wouldn't say there's any more crashes or any, uh, there's any more danger than than in previous years but it's like you say it is really stripping stripping it back to basics and you, there's a much more yeah. sort of raw sense and i guess one of the best things about that is and um the test at silverstone the first test a great example is how open the championship is there because you don't have one or two teams with mega electronics guys that are mm. dominating yeah it's it, it's so it's every you know it's it is yeah much more it's, level playing field. Uh, yeah absolutely and, and it's great for the championship you know, everybody uh, has the opportunity where you're not looking at massive numbers of parameters mm. that you're working on. You know, you can, you can um, it helps when you're not having to get two or three engineers and, you, you know, some of the stuff that they were getting, some of the electronics that we were getting back in prior to like 2012, I think it was, when we brought in the, um, the Superbike Evo class. Prior to that, when we were looking, you know, when you had Magneti Morelli in there and you had all the other electronics, bit, it was really complex stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you could get away with it sometimes if, you know, like some people say that more tech can be really hard to manage. Like sometimes we have a job selling bikes to club races, if you like, or mm. other races or other championships in Europe or wherever. They've got more tech because they think, oh, we've got to have an engineer, we've got to have this you don't you can lock it up and it and it works same as a normal ECU really mm -hmm. uh, it's just that at BSB you have to be on top of it to get the best out of it mm. and that's what you're trying to get all the time really yeah Do you, you, know, you know going back to your point there Chrissy you know about the safety regard do you yeah. think it's any less safe or more safe having an electronics package you know like that was an interesting point that you made that the sport hasn't got any safer without electronics or anything like that, if you know what I mean. Do you, no, do you agree say, with that? Yeah, I wouldn't say it's, um, I don't think, I think, I don't, safety is obviously paramount to, course it is, to yeah. anybody. Yeah. Um, but you've also got to look at the cost element of it. Yes. And when you're putting together a package, an electronics package like your World Superbikes, so where if you get something like Magnetic Marilla and you're spending two, three, four times what we spend, then you're getting more engineers and you're getting, it gets really complex and really cost heavy. So for like for our listeners, like can you give like a bit like I don't like this is like like throwing darts in the dark, you know what I mean? Yeah. You can't really put an exact figure on things, but like how much would a MoTeg package cost to a uh, what was that other system you were talking about? Mare Morelli? Magnetic Morelli, something yeah, like that. I've never I've never I've never actually come across that system in my life, never even heard of it. So like what, uh, what's the price difference in, in that then? Roughly um, roughly though, you know. Roughly, it's hard to say, really, because obviously yeah. BSB, because we're a controlled ECU and... So you have to uh, run more tech. We have to run it. Yes. You know, there's no other option. That is that is the control. Yeah. Um, so obviously there's uh, a deal that we get there. But say if you wanted to get a um, builder bike with a more tech package on it, you'd be looking at probably uh, three three to five grand for a... For loom, like a full for BSB, the loom and everything. full everything yeah then you'd be another couple of grand for um pcu three grand for the dash yeah 
But you we're talk we are talking about building a British superbike here, so that you know it's not that. Well a British superbike really can cost you anything from fifty to hundred and fifty grand. Right. Bloody hell. And this depending, moment, depending what, what you're buying, you know, if if you if you're looking at Ducati, Ducati BMW and stuff like that and you're buying factory engines for twenty grand twenty five grand a piece. You know, then there's also big variables with things like. I think he makes that in a week, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah. There's things like uh, swinging arms, which are huge variables like, yes. from your, your top yeah. teams, too. Yeah. But um, I just wanted to mention that, like, I've, I'm familiar with you visually around the paddock as being Peter Hickman's uh, sort of data right, guy. Right, yeah. Because yeah. you've seen to have been with Peter for, you know, a long standing relationship. Yeah, about four, four or five years four now. Five I've been with years. Peter, yeah. And uh, yeah. obviously, that, that you also go over to the TT and do the, yeah. the road racing side yeah, of yeah. things. Yeah. How does that compare looking at, you know, your sort of just the data side of things from the short circuits to the road racing? The, the road racing is a different. Different all bars all together, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where, how do you even start? There is that to it, yeah. I, I'm, just gonna, I'm just going to meet you down the, the front and have a couple of pints. We'll yeah, talk about we'll data. We need to discuss this in the anchor. Yeah. 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 That's it. <laughs> the North <laughs> West, like that, going, P, I reckon there's a 135 in you. Yeah. Yeah. You reckon P, yeah, yeah, I'm telling yeah. you, there's a 135 in you. Stop being yeah. a shy bag. <laughs> Get on with it. <laughs> in courthouse in Douglas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You blend right in in the car. We do, don't we? Yeah. We fit right in, don't we? I, t I tell you what, for our listeners who have never been to the courthouse, it is literally full of hair gel wankers, isn't it? So a working class, like, it is, isn't it? It is, you know what I mean? Everyone's like got the hair done, fake tan, tits and lips and all that stuff. You know what, what, what are you trying to say? Me. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. spotted us out, and <laughs> That's exactly what you're doing there. You know? Like a couple of drag acts, yeah. there, are we heels on? <laughs> <laughs> so that, get out here. So, I'm working. So, yeah. <laughs> so look at when you uh, Peter comes in from a from a you know a couple of laps at the TT. Where do yeah. you even begin to sort of digest the is it 37 mile? Yeah. Well, um, we do look at it in in sections and we do analyse the data quite a lot. And for me, it's quite a frightening thing, really, because you can be. Um, if you imagine you're out early evening sort of thing, practice session, and uh, you go through all the data and you start looking at where you can pick a bit up or where you can find a bit more time and stuff like that, yeah. and you're sort of thinking, well, well, if you just roll through here, you can maybe pick a bit through there and you can do a bit through that, you know, and then at nine o'clock you're sat having a beer and you're watching it on the telly and thinking, my God! Shit! I told him to go through there quicker. <laughs> so, no, it's just you can't you can't equate to it really. When you actually watch, when you look at the data, it gives you that is incredible. It quantifies mm -hmm. things basically. That's all we're looking at really. We're not looking at it being the right or wrong. The data is never right or wrong because sometimes the wrong data works. You know, you get people uh, that look at it and it's all about numbers right you have to hit this number here and you have to hit that number there whether it's your fork position and your shock position in a particular part of the corner or everything else often the wrong numbers work because it's down to the rider so you you have to listen to the rider and talk to the rider of what their feeling is because data will never give you feeling mm -hmm. you never get the feeling from what is mm -hmm. actually happening i can look and say no oh, that looks right and they'll come in and say no and right, you know, so we'll look at different ways of achieving wh where we need to be and what we need to do. And basically the data just gives us a way of quantifying what changes we want to make. It's not a, a rule of law or anything like that. You have to be able to analyze it and you have to be able to look at the data and take a picture of what the bike's actually doing. My God. So you're working out how the bike is, what aspect it's in and what, what phase of it, whether you're into the the entry phase, the braking phase, mid corner, exit, whatever. And you're looking at the way that the bike is reacting and the way that he's reacting to the bike because that changes everything mm -hmm. in the data. The rider input is massive compared to, you know, cars or anything else, you know. A rider input will change the whole dimension of the, the bike. That's why you never get two riders that probably run the, the same setup because they're all, they all react differently mm -hmm. and they all, the body position's different, the corner entry's different, exit's different. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, so basically we're looking at that and he'll tell me what sort of feeling he's getting and I can look at the data and then you're quantifying what the change is going to be. 
So it allows you to get there faster, mm -hmm. really, rather than taking a punt on something and say, well, all right, yeah, well, maybe a bit of preload here will do it. And you try it. No, it's not quite there. But you can look at the data and you can say, no, we need to do this, this, and this. And then we can look at the chassis program and then work out what how that changes it and how the position of the bike will change with whatever changes you're making to bike, spring, ride out, whatever. And then we build it up from there. This is, I think, my, sorry, my mind is literally blown. Can I ask, have you ever raced a lap of the Alaman TT? No. That for me is incredible, solely because you, you can sit there with a laptop and understand what he's doing on a bike. We've not been there on the bike and not done a lap yourself. And yet, as a professional, you can just go, well, actually, if you calm the throttle a little bit there and it'll turn in a little bit later and you'll gain the speed through that is, well, you that just, is no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm admiring that. That yeah. is, is amazing. Now, you're just looking <laughs> at what how the bike reacts to the different things, you know, and where, Incredible. what you need to get from the bike and how to get the best out of it. But uh, to be honest, it's, it's easy for me. Having a rider like Pete is, is, is so easy for me. Because he's easy to work with. Everyone and has said that. He about listens, him. and we we talk to each other, and he trusts whatever I tell him, and I trust whatever he tells me. So we have this thing, so we can go through it, and he knows that I'll never put him in danger by trying him to, to make him do something that I don't think is right. Yeah, you know. So you're always looking out, and you're just trying to, you're trying to make him basically go as fast as he can safely. Of course, that's yeah. the thing. You know, and minimising risk. But it's it, but it is incredible how like like I've been very lucky that I've raced around that circuit. Yeah. yeah. The thing about that thirty-seven mile long lap, it's not like thirty-seven miles of snetterdon. You know what I mean? By the no, tarmac's exactly, the yeah. same, and that like you know the yeah. terrains the same and everything. Imagine going around here thirty-seven times. You're gonna have the same variables, aren't you? But when you yeah. get to like Ginger Hall, you, you're popping in a gum shield, so it's like <laughs> you know like in. Yeah. That that is incredible how you can analyze that. Well, you, you do, and you look at it, and you overlay stuff, and you work out where things go. Because I mean, you you'll know sometimes you get a, you get an issue on a certain corner, and because a, a, as a rider, um, you correct me if I'm wrong, but when you come in after a session, you remember a single issue at a certain point on the circuit. Totally agree. Yeah. <laughs> totally agree. And that. then it's down to between you your crew chief and your data guy to look at it and say whether was that where the problem actually was or was it three corners earlier earlier where you messed up and went in a little bit deep lost a bit of time and then you're trying to make it up by the time you get to there mm -hmm. so subconsciously you're just pushing that little bit harder and that's where you make a mistake so it's nothing to do with the way the bike is it's the way that you've gone into it I'm just sitting here thinking I can't afford you. Damn you, PA, you know what I mean? That's all I'm thinking. I'm like, damn it. Thinking of, the, thinking of the TT and having such different sections that are like completely different in terms of the characteristics oh, yeah. and whatever. Yeah. And ideally you would have like a bike set up for say Ginger Hall and then you would have another bike set up for say the mountain and all. You'd have like, if, if in an ideal situation you would have totally different uh, geometry for different parts of the track. Is there yeah. a particular, do you, to get a, a good balance, do you, do you sort of focus on the f sort of faster stuff and then and then have to deal with it through the slow, it, or do you just try and get a compromise there's, for the whole? There's, there's always compromise, whatever circuit you're at, whether it's Netton where we are today, or whether it's the TT or the Northwest or Monza, wherever, there's always a compromise corner that you have to look at that you think, mm, forget about it. You're just gonna have to grit your teeth through there, kid, because. If, we're, yeah. if we set it up for that corner, we're going to mess you up there, 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 and there. So just lose a couple of tenths there, because if we put that right, you're going to lose two tenths there, three tenths there. Tenths. So you, you, there's always a compromise that you have to look at, and it's minimising your losses, really. That's how you're putting a lap together, really. Yeah. And every rider's got a little bit of a chink in the armour, if they like. There's a certain part that they're not really that happy with, mm. or and other parts that they really love to get into. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll, you'll always have bits. Like you say to Pete, say, right, what's your favourite bit of the TT? And he'll be like, well, the start and the finish. <laughs> sure, is that actually his answer? <clears throat> yeah, because he likes the whole thing. 
Oh, right, that's it. I figured like, that one straight thing. line. I thought, no, what, no. what a weird answer from the lap record holder of the yeah. Elf Man TT. No, no, the, the, the yeah. entire lap. He just, and he does it because he loves it. Mm. Ah, and that makes it easy to work with because, and he's such a, a consistent rider and easy to work with because, you know, you can just sit and chat about things and work things out and he just... Can you describe to me what's Peter Hickman like on a bad day? On a bad day. What's he like on a bad day? Because the thing <laughs> is, we, 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 like Pete Aikman is literally the most likable character in the BSB and the road park. Hello, hello, Pete. And you see is what you get. So what's he like yeah. on a bad day? I'd like to hear him on a bad day. Um, On a bad day. <laughs> we, we haven't had many, to be honest. But saying I've been, been with him and we've been through a lot of yeah stuff, good times and bad times. We, he's not thrown his toys out the pram many times. Right. And never, ever with anybody in our garage. Imagine that, aye. And he's um, sometimes the organisers have had a little bit of a vent, mm. you know, where he's got a bit angry about something, a decision that's been made, or yes, I. that's cost him. Um, but on the whole, no, we don't get many bad days. That's good. That's a a, true professional. That is a professional, though, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It really is, isn't it? Not and a spoiled brat. Spe yeah. Speaking of compromising. Uh, we we always have to run quite a low bike and uh, not in terms of ride height and um it it never really handles as good on the especially on the faster stuff but uh, yeah. at least piggy can ride it to scrutineer <laughs> is that what it's built that <laughs> can't touch floor that's it where my heels that you're wearing yeah can you be all right <laughs> yeah they were there, man, yeah. <laughs> can, I, can i bounce that question on you though piggy What's he like on a bad day, being his crew chief? What, what's his? What's he like on a bad day? We never had him. No, we haven't. Oh, shut up, man. No, 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 Come on, no. Not, even, not even a little. No, we haven't, have we? I've never known I've you. I've never seen you angry, actually. You know, that's a sign of a psychopath, <laughs> no. you know, isn't it? No. It is a sign of a psychopath. Like, no, we haven't, you know have we? We've never... A little bit. When things aren't going right, we just sort of yeah, have a just, laugh about it. Don't yeah, we? Just <laughs> tell a joke and yeah, tell just a joke. chill out. Speaking of jokes, have you got any jokes? Oh, listen, got this, nah, have you heard his cement joke? It's have you heard this cement joke? <laughs> no. It's okay. going to catch you out one day, right? He's I'll, gonna... I'll get you eat, Pete. For oh. <laughs> Do I need a drink? <laughs> get, get one of them down here. Get a free. rich energy down here. Have, have you got any quick? Uh, have you got any little jokes uh, prepped? Or do you want to have no, a think about it? No, we'll, I'll, have a, I'll have a little we'll, thing. We'll yeah. come back to yeah, it. Yeah, we'll come back to that. Yeah. No, I can't. Go on. So you know, with Pete, if you yeah. overlay his laps at TT, yeah, are they normally pretty close? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Over that distance, and they're yeah, still. That's another thing that makes him quite easy to work with. Is that he's very consistent. See, over at TT, that's unreal, isn't it? That it that, is that over, over, yeah, very much so. Yeah. What's he? What is he capable of? Capable. You know, if you put no, 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 like you know, when you think if you put every perfect sector together, he's a one thirty-five man. Like right. but his, was... his ideal in two thousand eighteen was actually one thirty-six point three. <laughs> Is that uh, when you say ideal? Is that, is that breaking up the, the it's set sectors? If we looked in the sectors and you look at what um, what he lost going through Kurt Michael, mm -hmm. and then again a little bit Ramsey, but not much there, and then but, the little bit going into Governors. What 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 were those situations? Was it like people holding them up or? It, well, yeah. It, yeah, well, you don't like to say hold them up because it's not. It's no, not no, no, it's race, no, 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 that, it's no, 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 like racecraft, isn't it? He's yeah, had there was there was a so. couple of areas like when he was, was coming into Kurt Michael, he would come across I think either five or six riders. Yes, and then, um, and obviously he didn't want to put them into danger. No, no. no. So he he sort of sat back a little bit. And then pick the points where he could go through them, you know, rather than it's incredible. And you know, like how you, you can set sectors on on the on your data. Yeah. If you say sectored it up into one mile each mile, so obviously they, that would give you a better ideal. Have you have you looked at things like that and the sort of th a theoretical ideal? No, I don't tend to overanalyze too much. You know, you can you can you can get carried away a little bit too much sometimes and start trying to piece together too much because it's all and especially the TT because one one sector leads you to the next which leads you to the next and as you well know it's all about momentum and just keeping it all flowing and keeping everything fast mm -hmm. what um what's top speed you've, you've had uh, Peter on the day or the Isle of Man TT the TT so far I think 198 something like that I think is that so yeah. be straight uh, no no 
Where's the fastest part? So it'll be Balag- coming out of Balagari, going towards the Highlander. Yeah, that's one of the fastest. Yeah. Mm. Well, hold on, one of the fastest. Where is the fastest then? Uh, mountain Mile. Really? Top end of the Mountain Mile. Um, Holy crap! Yeah, we get fast going up there as well. And uh, it's, it's, it's speed through corners that got me. I remember talking to you once, and you were telling me something speed through corners. You know, like one at Crosby, yeah. that left hander at Crosby. Yeah. Go on. And what, what's the fastest lean? Horrible. What's the big? What's the biggest lean? What is the fastest biggest lean angle that you've seen on uh, the deer at the TT? Oh God! If you'd have asked me a long time ago, I'd, I'd remember that. But it's, <laughs> I think it's it's not not massive. It's sort of fifty six lean angle, something like that. Yeah, fifty six on public roads. <laughs> at what speed? <laughs> oh, through Crosby. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Crosby's fast through oh, there. Oh, it's it's towers blackened up. Yeah. And, um, it's hard to say. I did, I did a thing um, a couple of years be. ago now for Matt Oxley when he was doing a, a big ride up in the Autosport magazine. Yeah. Where he picked points on the TT circuit and I gave him some data about speeds. Doing the him texting you back on is this real? <laughs> <laughs> Are you lying, Pete? I've got a good one. Do you know? Do you know the the back of uh, Pete's van? He's got that great picture of him totally sideways coming out of through Kate's cottage. That's, yeah, that's going down the hill. What's, like. what's the biggest uh, difference that that you've seen on Pete's uh, like a lap of the TT between the the speed of the front wheel and the speed of the rear wheel? Uh, oh, I, did, I did the thing once just out of interest, really, to count calculate how much spin. We were getting, and I think um, thirty-seven miles <laughs> no, <laughs> all the way around. <laughs> no, we did where the 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 front wheel actually did thirty-four and a half, I think, roughly, roughly speaking. Yeah, and the back wheel did uh, thirty-nine point something. What's this for? Sorry, difference in just spinning wheel speeds, right? So the back wheel, when you when you told it all up, obviously it's thirty seven and three quarter miles, but the back wheel. So that was for the whole actually lap. did that right. much more. And, and they're, they're and the, do you know, like in a particular mile, yeah. corner, like say if the front was doing a hundred mile an hour and the rear was doing like one twenty, like that sort of like the, it would have a twenty mile an hour difference. If it, it's, do you see that kind of increase? Uh, yes. Yeah, if the front wheel's off the ground long enough. That's <laughs> yeah, it is. That's the bullseye. There we go. There we go. We can call it out. Yeah. Now, so you do get somewhere. You get you. You obviously get points. Like there's there's one picture that I really liked, and I think it was going towards Ren Cullen. Where he's dog. actually and black. Well, black. The wood both the wheels he's are off. off the yeah. bloody ground, man. And he just wow. up, yeah. <laughs> but there's a couple. There's a couple of other pictures where uh, there's one I put on where it was. Um, you know, you, you, everybody puts on like the um, Wheelie Wednesday and stuff like that. You know, nah. but I did the Slideways Thursday, so I think it was. <laughs> and basically, <laughs> it, it's uh, the front wheel's in the air and the bike's completely sideways. Going up there. So the back wheel's spinning, the front wheel's in the air, and he's just. Yeah. That is that is brilliant, that. Unbelievable. It, it is, so, sorry for it. Where's your favourite place to work then? Is it the TT or do you. Where's your favourite place to work Do with a rider at a track? Yeah, basically that's it. The TT, you are. No, in. no, no, just with a rider at a track. I don't right, care you where don't... it is. Right. I just love being at racetracks. I mean, the, 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 every racetrack has a different element to it that you like, and every racetrack is a challenge. Yeah. I mean, when people say to me, you know, well, I don't like this particular track, well, why do you like it? It's a strip of time, you go as fast as you want, and what's wrong with that? What's not to like <laughs> about it? You know, it's all. But there's different things that always are a challenge to a rider and a challenge to me, if you like, to get the bike set up electronically to be able to get the best out of it. Yeah. And same with the uh, the chassis guys and everything else. We all work together working to try and find the best way. And you just can't. I just love being at racetracks. Yeah. Even if there's nothing on, if there's nobody else here, I'd be quite happy just walking around the racetrack and just studying it and, and working <laughs> it out, you know, and just... God trying man. to work out the best way around it and what you can do and so yeah just being at racetracks and racing is just what i've loved all my life it's what i've been doing for years so i think this is the perfect opportunity of like how the hell did you become the man you are today then what what got you into bikes and the love of this sport um well what got me into bikes was basically me really just been curious my dad had an old motorbike that he used to go to work on and 
what point it was, was that? Then? It just broke down. <laughs> well, PSA gold star, but the way you glazed your eyes over there. <laughs> <laughs> like bloody, bloody no, British yeah, things. Yeah. It, was a, it was an old uh, 250 James, which had a, yeah. a one uh, a, a Villiers engine in it. Right. And he used to use it just to go to work on. And it broke down and he couldn't pick it. So he just bought, got another one just to go to, to go to work on. What did your dad do for a living? So he was a lorry driver. I was going to say, not seeing a bike mechanic, because that would have no, gone no. down well. No. <laughs> no, he was a lorry driver. So... Uh, and so I just started tinkering about. I was only 11, I think, at the time. Yeah. I mean, Dad just said, well, if you can get it going, you can have it. So, yeah, by the time I was 12, I was riding around the fields on motorbikes and just tinkering about with them. And then we just got to the point where we were just modifying bikes in them days. I mean, the bikes were all right. They're not like bikes were are now, yeah. you know. Uh, so you're always trying to tune them, make them a bit better. So we started racing them, <laughs> and uh, yeah, started off with uh, a mate of mine because I was an I was an apprentice at British Steel, earning next to the bugger all as you do as an apprentice. <laughs> sort of thing. Yeah, they do, don't you? Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. five six he, years, he, isn't it? He, he was He's a, got an apprentice. He's fifty two. Still pays <laughs> me about an hour. <laughs> you might make it one day, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like my best mate that we used to race around the roads on, um, he was a steel erector, so he was earning mega money at the time. Um, and so we just bought a race bike and went racing, which was an old 250 Mat 1 Ducati. Straight in the Italian stuff. Yeah. Must yeah. have been making mega money, did he think? No. <laughs> <laughs> then we got into TZs, and uh, so it went on from there, really. Right. Uh, yeah. So it was your best race then? Did you ra you race then? No, I'd never you raced never race, myself. So you just went with your mate and then yeah, just did I just, the TZ I just went to the engineering side and loved that part of it. Right. Yeah. So like, at what point did the computer grace your presence and just thought, well, this is the way to go? Well, it became the way to go. Probably in for me in about 2006, 2005, 2006. Right. Um, where we started with the Motec system on in British Supersport and World Supersport and uh, I just fascinated me really so I've right. been a crew chief oh, sorry. were your early days in BSB just uh, on the tools rather than yeah yeah I was I was a uh, crew chief or, or, or uh, chief mechanic right up until four or five years ago really I was always a crew chief mm -hmm. so I, I did the data electronics and the whole the whole, whole packages you did then and then it just came about that um, uh, Pete was riding for uh, GB Moto Kawasaki in 2016 was that in 16? Yeah. that felt like 10 minutes ago yeah. like, oh, so he's, he's at the BMW poster it. child now though isn't he yeah, you know with, I mean? with um, Aslam and Ellison mm. yes, his I. teammates and then yeah. uh, and I just got a phone call from the team owner Asking me if I'd go along and help Pete out because uh, with three riders they were stretched yes, with the electronics and data side. So uh, yeah, so I went and joined them then. Can you, that, I think that's the first time that uh, team and base bees had a first, second, third at Alton Park. Alton Park and, and the uh, there was yeah. that brilliant wheelie over hilltop of all three yeah. of them stand up wheelie. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. hell of a thing for it, Mark Smith Halverson, the team owner, to come into BSB and sort of build it up. Yeah. To, to a three man team, and it's all like statistically to have three riders on the podium mm. in the same race is like it's, how much is it's, it's, like been, you... it's been done a couple of times. It's the only time it's been done in BSB, and whether it'll ever be done again, I don't know. It's been mm. done in uh, I think Junior Superstocks, yeah. And uh, Mortal Breakers Mortal did it, did it brand twice, hatch. didn't they? I think. They did a brand hatch yeah. in 2012, 2012 with Jake Dixon, James Lodge, and Jimmy Rose. That's it, yeah. For round one. And uh, it was actually yeah. the first uh, Superstock 600 race Jake Dixon did, and he won it in the yeah. wet. Or he might have came second, and I think Jimmy won it. I can't remember which way around yeah. that was. But um, yeah, it's a, like I said, it's a hell of a. If, for a team to get one person on the podium is hard enough. It is, to yeah. get The double podium yeah. is crazy. Three is like. Especially, yeah. especially at BSB, it's so competitive in all the, all the classes. I mean, the, the way that they're 
uh, the whole championship has been laid out has lent itself yeah. and the depth of talent in all the classes yeah. really is amazing what, what was your first uh, professional job in in bsb crew chief Ooh, sorry i meant with uh, like which team which team oh, which, which team which rider yeah oh god um, Steel Erectors, TZ352. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Salt and Battery Team, whatever the fuck. Salt and Battery Team. Or a chip. Chippy, yeah. I'm a chippy. 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 Yeah. There's only one chippy in that spot. There you go. Uh, <laughs> that's an inside joke for all our listeners. Yeah. They'll be like, that's not even funny. It never <laughs> is funny, this show, but that was funny to me. <laughs> the first one. The first one would have been 97. I think it was 97, 97, 98. Well, 97 to, I think, 2001, I was with a lad called Neil Crayers, privateer superbike. And we raced, um, well, in 97, we had John Reynolds' 96 World Superbike Kawasaki, which was a nice bit of kit, that was. I bet. Really nice, yeah. Then uh, we went on to Ducati with a 916. In I think ninety nine. Didn't last too long on that. Oh, why is that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just struggled with it. To be fair, right? Yeah. Got you. Uh, the setup of the bike was really. It was an awesome bike. Mm. Really nice bike. It was tough to set up and go quick on. And we were working. We were a privateer, but obviously, because we had John Reynolds's bike. Early, we had quite a bit of. Um, or oh, his father did knew Ben Atkins really well. He was the owner of Revy Red Bull, uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so we, when we went to Ducati, we we bought a, a course of Ducati, and, and in them days, I think the engine was twenty five grand. For, for one then back then in the late nineties, you know. <laughs> and uh, Chris Mayo was doing the engine, and he was also doing the Revy Red Bull engines. Is Chris Mayo still building engines? Is he still? Is yeah, he, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's just dropped off the grid, really. Like, I've no, done... he's he's uh, well. Chris has retired several times over the last ten, twelve. Right, got you. Years, you know, just pops his head up when he wants. Job yeah, I, fair yeah, enough. He got he, he he loves clocks and what he builds clocks and stuff. But he still okay. does. He still does. Some engine work and tuning work for right. some people that, that are Aye. involved in yeah, <laughs> but he was he was the top man yeah, yeah very good very good at his job and uh, but there was a, the thing about the nine one six that we had was he could never get away from this feeling of the front end tucking and I remember it sort of climax was at uh, Alton Park I think it was and turn one at Alton Park. I said, I'm just going in there, and just the front just wants to fold on me. So we sat in with uh, went to see John Reynolds, and he said, "Look, he's got this issue where the, the front's tucking," and he said, "Yeah, it will." And we're like, "Well, how do you get through it?" He said, "Well, he said basically what you got to do is you've got to go in there, and if you feel it's going to tuck, and the next lap we're going five mile an hour faster, and it'll be all right." But he couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> he, he couldn't get through that barrier because uh, the more you pushed it, the better the chassis got, basically. <laughs> but he couldn't get through that because he right. thought, "If I'm going far, I'm just going to uh, off be you on go." Here, like, you know, so we we got rid of the Ducati, and then we got um, the uh, R71, which was a beautiful, beautiful bike, the Yamaha, really nice. So we ran that for a couple of years. And uh, yeah, so that was good. So that was my first few few, few years at, at BSB. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't known as BSB back then, I don't think. What it was, was it called it, before BSB? Uh, it was run by MCRCB, which still are the like the governing body, if you like. Right. With it behind BSB. But, uh, there we are. Every day's a learning day. Uh, <laughs> and then yeah. over the over the recent years, you said uh, you've been with Hickman for like the last four or five years. What's uh, like say from two thousand and ten? What what sort of riders and teams have you worked with? I was with like a Joe Dickinson for a good few years, from about oh six through to nine. I was with the Yamaha with Rob Mack when he was winning in two thousand and eight. 
and Kawasaki was with Kawasaki for a bit. Then we were on with the Aprilia's in. I was at, well, 2010, 11. I worked with Greg Fitzpatrick when he raced, and 12, and that was like the beginning of the the Evo class, mm. where they were restricting the electronic side. Then I worked with Aprilia. Is that split off team? Split off team mm -hmm. for a year and a half. And then I was with GB Moto <coughs> when it was a Honda. We had Luke Quigley and uh, and Tristan Palmer on the superbikes. Then uh, what did I do after that? I was with Motor Breakers for a year and a half. Quite enjoyed that with Sean. He was a top, top guy, really good guy to work for. And then got with um, GB Moto again. Yeah, and I was with them in 16. And then 17, we moved to Smith's. So 17, 18, 19, 20 with Smith's. And then it's changed over to FHO. And there we are. And, this and year. What, what's, yeah. the new, what's the new boss like then? Oh, it's spot on. I mean, um, half the team, but if you like, with me, uh, me, Pete, Daz and Luke, mm. uh, we've been with Faye for the, probably about the last three to four years at Macau. Of course, yes, so, I. So she she sponsored us at, at Macau. So we, mm. although we ran a Smith, we ran under her colours and Batham's colours. And, yes, I. Well, it was SMT originally the first time and we met her and then we went under Batham's and Aspire Ho. Yes. There, so Some of the not, best rubber bikes on the grid, the black yeah. and the gold oh, and everything. Nice, yeah. and I'm it's still very... my screens there on my, on my laptop. I don't believe it. I think, I think I've... this year's one's I nice. Think I'm a big fan of the tail course. Look, I think it's an yeah. outstanding looking bit of kit. Like. I must just mention as well, uh, touching on Macau, I asked, before the interview, I asked Hick, Hickey uh, for any, you know, sort of gossip or any topics to talk about. And he said, you must ask about <laughs> dancing in Macau. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard you, no. you've got some good news. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a bit of a dab hand on the dance floor, yeah? Be honest. <laughs> Be honest. If I make it past two or three o'clock in the morning, I'm off. And obviously, we've just had the first uh, BSB test. You don't care then. Do you? That's, that's it's, all. No. It's uh, yeah. it's past two. It's time yeah. to get yeah. it's time, time to get the moves time on. Time to get loose. Yeah. Hit, hit the dance floor. That's it. Yeah. I bet I bet you're a bit of a mover, piggy. <laughs> in my younger days, I was in your younger yeah. days when you've never grown up. How are you, I bet you've got some right moves, you, Darren. <laughs> Rather than there, busting, busting the moves right out. No, that's only going to bar. <laughs> I was only doing it to get away from the bar. <laughs> I take off. Oh, can I just say um, we're down in Snedden, and uh, I think it's over the last year there's there's been a crack in a uh, fuel station just dropped outside, straight outside the track. Oh, and yeah. It's perfect for when we're here because it's got a, a McDonald's, a Subway, a Greg's, and a Starbucks, which is like. It's got to be a good yeah. four. And it's just reminders of a funny story, I think. Total uh, Rider Health Station, isn't it? Yeah, oh, it is. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> but, um, do you know, um, go, obviously, tr travelling around testing and stuff, the first time that we well, uh, a few years ago, we pulled in from Mackie D's, and I'm I'm there we're like all the time, coffees, wraps, whatever. Pulled in, and I'd, I got me usual like me latte and that, and I said, "Oh, Piggy, what are you having?" And he said, "Oh, uh, well, what, like what can you get?" And I was like, "You've got to be joking, like <laughs> McDonald's." No, He'd never had one. Oh, is this very recently? I thought oh, this is like a story for me. Years, five years ago. That's what I was saying. Oh God, but, but, but you've been on. If, uh, don't mind me saying, you've been on air for Kenny Wilde, so fair play <laughs> to take note. Like, you know, and I still don't go now. When's your it's always, been a, it's always been a health freak, you see. That's why you, yeah, oh, I get yeah, yeah, oh, I. I'm an athlete, huh? Yeah. You don't get a figure like that eating no. McDonald's. No. <laughs> <laughs> Same as Subway, by the way. We went to Subway, and I think that just blew your mind. That you could actually choose all your food. Yeah, all the stuff. It was like, ooh. Yeah. Yeah. What's all that? Meatballs in a sandwich. Oh, that's like that's not right, is it? Yeah. I'll tell, tell you what, right? He hasn't had a pint since, like, since what? lockdown. Like he hasn't, he doesn't drink no, in the like house a, or nothing. Oh, okay. That's a canny claim, you know what I mean? Because when lockdown hit, everyone was like drinking on the wine, and having yeah. a few beers and stuff like that. He hadn't touched a drop. No. Ah, but other week, oh. your dad would it with uh, Donington, weren't we? Mm. So I'd not drunk since last BSB round. Yeah. When was uh, that? When was that last round? October. October. But yeah, yeah that October. would. Yeah, yeah, that would Brands Arch. 
and I'd not had a drink. And your dad said, I'm nipping out some food for takeaway. He said, I says, I forgot my beer. He says, I'll get you some beer. So he got me uh, eight cans of Stella, right? And I hadn't had, had, had a drop. I thought, oh, all you've right. done is grafted it for yeah. them, haven't you? I thought, I'm all right trying to get down these, but I thought, I'll give my best shot. And it looked like I was going to run out. So Dom, he dropped some Magnus in me. So I ended up having eight Stella, <laughs> and two, bottles, two bottles of Magnus made him to snake behind. I'll tell you what, when it, it was an absolute howling, giggling mess, man. Honestly, I've never <laughs> seen him so like, this is red little hair bale with feet giggling with a couple of bites in his hand going, I'm, I'm so happy to be out. <laughs> that must be, you know, like since you were 16 and started drinking, that must be the, the longest you've had off the air. It off is, the it is, yeah. Like yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you yeah. feel it? Did you Lockdown feel saved your life. Did yeah. you feel any different for it? Or? No. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. I didn't because I don't get hangovers. I'm... Uh, you're an you athlete. Do you, son. Do, you, do you like an ale? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your tipple? I like a beer. What's your tipple? Uh, I'm a bitter drinker. There you go. Yeah, 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 about you. Yeah. Back, yeah. back on to back onto the bikes. Uh, yeah, the boring bit. The motorbikes. We've <laughs> yeah, just yeah. had uh, the Silverstone beer speed test. The first yeah. look of the the new M1000, and uh, I've got a few additions like the wings and whatever. Yeah. What's uh, from the from the computer side of things, the data side of things? Uh, what what's your first thoughts on the new bike? First thoughts are good. Yeah, there's a lot of potential there. Yeah, there's there's more to be got out of it. I think we've we've got some work to do, but uh, yeah, it's answered some of the questions that we have with the old bike, but we've still got some areas that we need to improve on. Now, what, what 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 were the questions on the old bike then? What what did it what did you want to see improved, and is that getting ticked off the list? Uh, one of the biggest issues that we had uh, last year was speed. Right. Yeah, we were down on speed, so we we struggled a lot with. Is this um, top end or from out the drive out the corners or is it literally no, just it's, throughout it's the range? Literally, we we could we could run good, good corner speed mm. with good entry speed, uh, good mid corner speed and initial exit, but once we got probably thirty meters off the turn, then we were just starting to lose. Is it the same, it's the same wheel two bikes with yeah, the, yeah it is yeah. Sykes. So so you could you could put a good lap together, but once you got in traffic, if they took you. Corner speed away from you, mm -hmm. you just ended up going like like that mm -hmm. for the whole right. race, and or you just get to the next corner and somebody just blocked past, blocked past what. So you you watched everybody from Sykes, us, and whatever. All of a sudden, you could you could be in the top five, but then as the race went on, you could back, gradually back, back. progress. Like, so all the BMWs were generally. You get the odd flash every now and again where somebody yeah, glory, do, somebody were a really good one, it. you know, when, yeah. you, when when all the planets aligned and all that. But a lot of the time, we'd all be in a group between sort of ten and fifteen. Yeah, the, I was going to say the right. championship last year was <coughs> really wide open, probably the most open yeah. it's been for years. But the only manufacturer that didn't seem to be in the mix was the BMW. Did they get so it was last year? It's the no, I think it's the first year that. Um, am I am I right in saying BMW didn't even get a podium last year in BSB? In the super white class, um, yeah, you I'm might you might be right. I'm pretty actually, sure, I'm pretty yeah. sure they didn't. Yeah. Definitely didn't get a race yeah. win. And for such a you know a mega a mega mm. bike, it was it's like sort of mind blown how that happened. It, However, it actually made a, a really good stock bike, but it was a difficult super bike. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Look and looking at uh, the first signs from the test the other day, it looks like that's possibly changed. I know you can't extrapolate too much from a test, mm. but. The, there was a, a lot of BMs shown really yes. strong and a lot yeah. of promise. Yeah. And also this year, the the lineup for BMW is like mental. Like obviously you've got the your uh, team. Yeah. You've got the OMG lads with Kyle Ride and uh, Bradley Ray. Yeah. You've got the the Synetic lads, Andy Ewan and Buchan. Mm -hmm. Uh, who else we've got? We've got Joe Francis. Yeah. There's Am a I good mix. mix. Yeah. There's a good mix there. Yeah. Is Joe Francis on the old biker though? Is it on the Gen Three again? It looked a little bit like it looked like a Gen Three. Yeah, I think that I think they they will have the M, but I'm not sure if they got it just yet. Right, got really. you. So we only got, we only got our engines. To be fair, we only got our engines a couple of days before the weekend. So I had them for two days over the weekend on the uh, on the dyno. Bloody and hell. then we literally put bodywork on them and went to Silverstone. And so it was that late. Not not giving too much away. <coughs> we still haven't got all the parts yeah. to, to the opposition. But you know, in terms of just a stock bike, what's the horsepower increase from the old bike to the to the new M? Are we talking like a few few horsepower well, on a stocker? Yeah. Um, 
it's not that good because the old the old bike was really good. Right. When you got it fueling nice, I mean you 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 were it was pretty good. But yeah, there's probably another five, six horsepower. Mm. And not the addition that, of not the not that much more than so it's not massive. Not, not, but and, it, it's still more. It's, not like it's, taken away. Yeah. it's still it's more. where it delivers it and where it comes in with right. what makes the difference. And the that. addition of the aero package to kind of keep the idea to sort of keep the, the bike moving forward. Have you had a chance to back to back like the wings yet? Yeah. Yeah we have, yeah. And is it is it noticeable? Yes. Right. Yeah, the the lads, to be honest, they felt it immediately. Wow. We all expected it to be, you know, uh, once you're getting up like 80, 100 mile an hour type thing, then you feel something. But they could all feel it literally going out of pit lane. Mm -hmm. I don't that good. I well, hold, on, that, hold on, what about you? <clears throat> you you've ridden your new, you're, we're, we're literally looking at your ZX10 here. What, what yeah, it's yeah, going to be? Some arrow in that, yeah. What, what, yeah. what? Yeah, Do you feel the same on a stock bike? I, I haven't backed to back them, uh, Dom. So it, ah, but you all not. But like, like you see, like the lads have rolled out a pit lane, and it's a bit like they can the, see that. The original, thing. the initial feeling was it just felt like the bike was just planted, right? So yeah, no, that's not. No, it's and, dead it, and, it did, and it did wheelie slightly less. There was no real. The only negative that we got really was, and it doesn't really, it doesn't occur at. Silverstone, so it never showed up in the test there. But mm. we we did ride it at Cadwell, and the other thing was like a quick change of direction. It was a, took a little bit more effort to actually turn the bike over, right? Yeah, so interesting. We, that. So when it gets into the corner, and it holds well, but then changing like in chicanes mm. took, required a little bit more rider I, effort. I honestly don't think it's going to be long until there's going to be uh, moving parts within the wings and other bits of the bike yeah. so that when you hit the brakes you'll have like well Honda, Honda were out. talking about it weren't they and, oh and, were they uh, I don't know yeah it, it'd be quite easy to put active um, active wings if you like so you can uh, you could vary the, like down downforce, downforce and, and, that, and yeah, yeah and it but might be in the corners to have them it's right. whether they'd allow it really you'd need another driver in your ECU and everything to be able to control it and oh that is cool I've been yeah. saving up fab ice lolly sticks I've been making my own spoilers for my <laughs> yeah, bike you know what I mean yeah. I'm well on for it like yeah. super glue and all that yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like Kellogg's packets and like, you know, you're on it son I use them yeah. for my gaskets for the engine wow. you know it's, it's <laughs> tight it's tight running at the top you know <laughs> <laughs> now we're uh, looking at the, ch the championship this year again I think it's wide open and in terms mm. of like pr predictions and stuff it's so so difficult to, to you know see where everyone's going to fit in quite frankly um, do you looking at the championship this year, do you see any of the new new arrivals to the championship causing a problem? Obviously, you've got Flores in your team, so we expect him to be really strong. Yeah, well, he's, he's had a year here before, you know, so mm. we had a year or two years ago with uh, with Honda, so he does know he's, he's ridden the circuits before. So. Yeah, and what, what's he like behind closed doors? You know, a bit of a drinker, a bit of a sacre bleu, you know, is he a bit of a party party? Paddy Forres. I was getting angry. Because sort of, obviously we have an Irish contingent to the team now, you see, with uh, ah, Brian McCormick. Brian McCormick, McCormick guy. Uh, now I know what he's That's like on the drink, he's a good oh, yeah. lad, so there you go. <laughs> so now actually Javi's, he's, he's, he's spot on. His That's feedback's good. really good. And... Uh, his craft is really good. He's very professional in how he goes about his business. Yeah. But he's also a good crack as well, which he fits into the team really well because that's a lot of what the team's about, really. Yeah. We we try and have it like uh, we're a bunch of mates that go racing. And that works, doesn't it? We so, and that, I think that's why the ride is like Pete and that feel so comfortable because there's no... Uh, there's no egos in the team or anything like that. We're just a bunch of guys that go racing we do the best that we can and we help each other whereas you you don't want to be in a team where somebody is, is trying to pick fault with somebody rather than trying to help them you know so yes. we're all looking out for each other and if anybody sees anything that somebody's doing point it out to them. you point it out you talk about it and we talk, and we all get along really great you know so we have a great social 
side after the race and then have a good crack. And Piggy's glazing over here. He's like, can I join your team? Is that you know, like a scrupulous Chrissy Rouse guy? Is that the kind of guy? ho if you do need another man, yeah. He's, yeah. He's, he's available. He's, uh, he's on loan to me, but he's, he's got that uh, negotiation got, with Chrissy. They go with your eyes, don't they? I love it, so, yeah. yeah, match, yeah, match, yeah. My, match my teeth, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> no, I tell you what, uh, Tommy Hill has done such an amazing job with the, He has, actually, uh, with yeah. The, the, the design on that spot, is spot on. I think yeah. every single person stood on pit lane on uh, Tuesday when it was a Tuesday and Wednesday yeah Tuesday and Wednesday yeah. when we're down at Silverstone when them bikes came out you know the, the black and turquoise but then there's that sort of shiny gold running through oh, it yeah. nice. the wings ev- everything uh, the design is like absolutely yeah. mega and uh, there's a keen a big push on all the sort of media things and like I, yeah. every time I open my phone I just seem to be getting bombarded which is obviously good for, for the team and for yeah. the sponsors and everything yeah. Um, but uh, yeah hopefully we'll have a you know a good season and, and I do I do think uh, Hickman and Forez will be um, be definitely strong and it'll, yeah, it's going to be great to see where everyone it is. Yeah, in. it's going to be a tough year because the depth of field is really strong and I think anybody in the top 10 or 15 could win a race at some stage. Well, we've seen during the test, it, like every single uh, session when they were doing like the fastest till now was different and we're seeing loads of different manufacturers, mm. riders, whatever. Uh, we've got quite a few new additions to the championship. There's the two Japanese lads that have joined mm. Honda. Obviously, Forrest is back from World Suit of Bikes. We've got Danny Ken stepping up from Superstock 1000. Yeah. He's got, adapted Brad, well to that. We've got well, uh, yeah. Brad Jones and Rory Skinner coming up from British yeah. Supersport. Of all the newcomers, um, do, you, do you see any of the them sort of posing a threat to the sort of the showdown i think you you can never tell really because some people just yell with the super bike some people it takes two or three years to really get into it mm-hmm. um so occasionally you'll find that somebody coming from super sport can I've gel heard, with it i've heard sometimes a little bit easier than somebody who's come from super stock yeah because nope. they, they don't become reliant on the the rider heads mm-hmm. In super sport, so yeah, uh, you got ones coming from there. I mean, you've only got to look, um, you know, I mean, Rory Skinner, yeah, the crack in here on the super sport, super uh, sport bike, he could he could go well. Brad, Brad's a great lad mm-hmm. and a real good rider, you know. Um, I think Skinner you, you could, look how Ryan Vickers took yeah. to it, you know, when he when he came on, he was straight there, mm-hmm. so yeah, it's. Any one of them can be up there, really. Who's your money on, Piggy? I think Skinner could be a dark horse. You know, coming up for that reason. Yeah. Mm. And it's a good rider, isn't he? Yeah. Very good, yeah. Very good Very rider. Good. He's, he seems to be, like, he's just getting, he's finding his feet at the moment. I think yeah, a lot yeah. of people just kind of expecting him to be, like everyone does, isn't it? The new kid in the block, that they, they're expecting him to be in the top three or nowhere kind of yeah. thing. But he's doing the right thing by going... Just take your time, tea. learn it. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Don't That's hurt it. yourself, just keep... Well, exactly, it. exactly. For me... For me uh, Danny Kent did a great job when he he was fastest up until the second day's lunchtime, I think. Mm-hmm. And uh, although the Suzuki tends to be really strong around Silverstone, so it'll be interesting to it's see how that goes. Say yeah. say like Alton Park or whatever, but he, yeah. a very very strong showing for his first time on the superbike. And uh, and also I would say the other sort of standouts of the test, Kyle Ride moving to the the OMG team. He mm. was um, topping a lot of sessions yeah. and looking really comfortable on the bike. And obviously Glenn Irwin on the Honda broke the outright lap record for uh, the circuit two wheel lap record, and it was a cold sort of miserable yeah, day as well. Was, yeah. So you've got to take your hat off for that. And yeah. uh, so, but it you know um, Buchan was looking good, Andy yeah. Irwin was looking good. I tell, I, I always tell you who's Mister Consistent at the beginning of the year every year, Jason O'Halloran. Oh, yes. it? You can just set, you yeah. can even set your watch by it. Opening tests, Jason yeah. Allen, Jason Allen, doesn't he? He comes yeah, out the does, block yeah. every window yeah. and goes. He's the boy to beat for, at the beginning of the yeah. season. For me, he? for me, I, a, I know it's easy to say uh, Josh Brooks or you know, for, like if you ask people the favourites. Yeah. But for me, I, I would. If I, had, I'm not a betting man, but if I was betting on the championship, I, I don't think you could put a lot past Jason O'Halloran, the way he came on the second half of last year, it's unbelievably uh, consistent and fast, mm. and the way he's testing and everything, I think uh, he's going to be a yeah. force to be reckoned and with this year. But Cam seemed to have that like that consistency within the team. What I mean by that is same riders, same bikes, little upgrades, yeah. same team, and it just seems to yeah. tick over, but with progression. Yeah. And you don't really find that, don't you? You know, it's just them little bits of tick over, and it yeah, is nice so, to yeah, see. Yeah, it works, yeah. Have you worked yeah. much with the Yamaha? Not a great deal, no. 
No, um, it's a good package. Very good package. Everyone says mm. that about the Yamaha. Everyone says they get like there hasn't been a single rider that hasn't gotten a Yamaha and says that like they haven't not enjoyed it. They said there's such a yeah. brilliant, but they don't seem to quite have that. Pit, like all the hammer times have Yamaha yeah. won yeah. recently on the new shape. Is it Josh Brooks and of the championship? Yeah, was yeah, it Josh Brooks that last put it on the top? I think he was the last champion. Mm. Wasn't he? Think it, right, yeah. he must have been. The that was the Milwaukee one as well, the Sean Mewen yeah, team, yeah. was it? When the hell was well, that? But the same again, mind. Uh, Silverstone's a real strong sh- track for the Yamaha traditionally. Uh, obviously, yeah. can you remember a few years ago when it was Taz and Jason back Oh, for yeah, the yeah. Oh, that was pr- well, the Yamaha's was... really good on the early corner exit. You can get on the, they seem to be able to get on the gas that little bit earlier with the Yamaha. Right. Because it just drives really nice. Mm-hmm. Like usable power at the bottom yeah. type of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what, 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 like, um, what's been your favourite bike to work on then? You know, throughout your career, you know, like, I'm trying to think. Like, you're well, a bit biased. The moment with BMW, but are they <laughs> the nicest things to work on? For you? Uh, the the best, the one we won the TT in 2018 is probably the most memorable one. And that would be the Gen Beryl. Free. Beryl, yeah, we all love Beryl. Beryl, I. Yeah. <laughs> Where did that name come from? Was she won the? She's the she first was, Isle of Man. Yeah, first woman to race at the, the Isle of Man. There we are. That's what's what you nicknamed the bike after yeah, barrel, so the barrel yeah oh. we, and it was quite up really we're winning the uh-huh. is that like a well-known scene. thing of that's the first it's, it's, it's called history yeah it's uh yeah it's, it's, <laughs> if, if, if you know nothing about the isle of man then it's probably <laughs> they, he's, a, he's a maths teacher not oh, history shit, sorry. teacher ah, yeah, go, sorry. <laughs> yeah. and when you think about history lessons are getting harder and harder isn't it more to learn. More to learn, yeah. <laughs> oh, for God's sake, thank you, man. Oh. <laughs> well, um, so this week, we're, we're, actually, we're at Snetterden now, but the, yeah. the BSB lads are here. And I think we've got three days, haven't we, Tuesday? Wednesday. We have, yeah. I think Tuesday's uh, an open pit lane, BSB, and then Wednesday and Thursday are sessioned, I think, with all, all the classes. Mm. I'm surprised there's not more of you lads here. Because obviously, when Hickman appears, like no, then Brian well, McCormick and Matt, is it Max? Max? Max Stanton, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's, well, he's on for the Pete Hickman squad, isn't he? So? Yeah, well, that's basically Pete's helping Max out, really. Right. He's a local lad from, from Louth. Yeah. Um, who, well, I first met actually because I, I used to dine and set up his R6s when he was racing a couple of years ago. And then yeah. I was on. And then uh, Pete got involved with him a little bit and did a little bit of coaching. And then decided that um, within the the PHR performance, because Pete started up a a, a business doing uh, uh, race bike preparation and engine tuning. Yes, I. Um, and we're just building a um, a, a purpose built premises at the minute, which is going to be basically a uh, an engine tuning uh, business with bike building, the, the dyno centre. We've got a suspension uh, engineering side in there. An oasis well. of motorcycle and racing. We've got a graphics guy in there, and that's all. Basically, we can do it. It's going to be like a big, a in, complete in in-house house. performance center that he's building at the minute, obviously, Bloody hell. for the long term. And and Max uh, is one of the first because you know Pete does the O'Valley Valley Championship. Yes, I. He, he never well, stops he, at Peter. <laughs> I know. So he, so he's got Max. That he's he's helping out on a BMW in the uh, thousand class here, mm. and it, it just sort of came about that obviously we're at Silverstone, then we're coming here. The Thundersport meeting was here, so it's like, well, we'll come and put on a little bit of a presentation of a show, if, if, if you like for his his business, and with Brian being over from Ireland as well, and not been a travel backwards and forwards, so we'll lend to you as well, and we'll just well, yeah, happy to do a bit it. of extra riding really. And, because are you involved with Pete's so, uh, set up and that? Because you've got your own yeah, well, I'll, setting up. No, I'll, I'll be moving my dino centre over into his. Right, right. His, do, his, do you want to give your yeah. active force uh, a little bit of a plug, the, your own business? Like what, what sort of uh, services and products? That's a busy have? man right there. He's like, I don't really <laughs> want to actually. <laughs> yeah. the, the diary's yeah. booked up until 2032, Chrissy. I don't really. Yeah. If you could scratch that off in the edit, that'd uh, be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, what's the oh. LLP? It's Dominic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is your, what's your business all about? Uh, well, my bit basically um, focused more recently, last few years, basically as a, a dyno performance center, really. 
So I do mainly dyno, dyno work and so like track days and club racing lads. Yeah, but I do quite a lot of track day and club races and quite a few of the uh, British BSB Superstock teams and a few Super Sport lads. And, and is that get, do you get all the fuel and all all prepped yeah, for the track and that's pretty the, much yeah that's dyno work, try and get the best out of the engines and everything. Mm-hmm. For them before they uh, go Just, racing, and I heard you're five pound an hour, which is fantastically cheap. So if <laughs> you want to play, so busy. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, like a busy fool, is it? <laughs> Explain to me. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm pulled out. We know. <laughs> what um, what have you been up to recently, P- Piggy? No much, just working. Been you've, working. You've been flat. You've been working right, like a like. A, I yeah, evenings. <laughs> I've been. Finishing one job, then going to another one in an evening, and yeah, yeah. So we'll, we're give busy. You a, we'll give you a plug on the last podcast about the drive. By the way, P- uh, Piggy came up to oh, our, uh, my uh, mum and dad's house yeah. a few weeks ago and uh, did a, a lovely, lovely, beautiful drive. Right, and, uh, made a cracking yeah. job. Like. Right, he, he's yeah, not yeah. actually being biased because I turned up going, "I hope it's shite so I can have a go at him." But unfortunately, <laughs> it was magnificent. I'm looking at this going, "That is absolutely cock on." Damn well, it! That is that. all the uh, manhole covers all oh. cut in, per- matches it in, and he's got yeah. it. Oh, aye, perfectionist. It's oh, perfectionist. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, you Top know, man. inlaid manhole covers that you book yeah, into. Yeah. yeah, you guys will do them right, aren't you? If you're going to do them, uh, that's if any job you're going to do it, you might as well do, do it right. right. I'll tell you what, though, he's he's literally like he's a perfectionist at everything. He's the only mechanic I know who's got his own personal sponsor. <clears throat> he's sponsored by Need a Motorcycle. <laughs> you know what I mean? How many mechanics do you know have their own product placement in place? Fair Think enough. about it. That is that that's uh, that's tramping on, isn't it? You're like, yeah. you can't afford me, Chrissy. I'm not wearing your tops, I'm wearing yeah. me own. Have you had time to think about it? Oh, no, a word from our sponsors. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Any one liners or anything? Uh, no, I tell you, I've got a true, this is a true story. This, oh, this going is, back, I don't know if this is a joke or what. No, no, it's true. And this, going back some years, it's when uh, there was a big pub in Strand in Douglas called Cases. Can you remember it? On left, going down to the post office now, I think. Uh-huh. And my mate, Dave, he'd got a whoopee cushion. You know what I mean, so, and he used to put it under his arm, under his coat, and he used to knock out like he'd farted, you see. So we were in cases, and there were a few lasses about Deb, that Debbie Ashby. She she ended up having a pub in our <laughs> man. Right? You know Debbie? Yeah, yeah. So page, page three model. Right. Anyway, he stood at the back of it, and they let this... Very good company, then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, he let this fart out with his cushion. So she looked around, she like, a bit disgusted as Tim. So we'd had a few beers as well. So we were coming out at the pub as it was shutting. And he went into one at Chinese. So went in. And then he was coming, he knocked a few people about acting like really drunk. And as he was doing it, he let another one out. And you saw everyone look round at him in Chinese. They went, blind, yeah. <laughs> so he like, comes out and we're all laughing, you see. I said, that was funny that day. You're going to have to do that again. You've got to do that again. <laughs> So I went up to the next Chinese, and he did the same in there. And just looking at it from outside, so funny, like everyone's like, well, yeah, kid behind counter, like little Chinese man. <laughs> He's looking at him. He asked, he asked if he were all right, Chinese man. <laughs> anyway, we all, we, we're all outside laughing that much. Dave comes out and starts laughing, and I was like crying. I'd got tears coming down my face. And Dave was laughing and laughing. And he, he ended up, he, he threw up. He was laughing that much, he was sick. <laughs> so just as he was sick, these two lasses walked past, eating the chips. And they turned round. <laughs> and the mate said, one of them said to the other mate, said, oh, it's that dirty bastard that farted. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true. <laughs> Do you know the best thing? You know, when you come away racing and, and you know, it's very, um, you know, like, the, just crack like this, you, you soon realise, someone told me years ago that blokes never really grow up. It's just an act, like, when they're with oh. the, the families and stuff. Oh. When you get away racing with the lads, it's, like, you you, yeah. you do realise that. It's, it's not what it's cracked up to be. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. We went to Man, eight. It's still... <laughs> Praying for the day that I will, but you grow it's up. not going to happen. Now. <laughs> My mother gave up on that forty years ago. Not me growing up. So. Oh, 
<laughs> Man with you said to me, why don't you go up stupid? And I don't think I've disappointed no, her. You, you, you're <laughs> good... <laughs> oh, you have, she said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so, um... Four stupid blokes in a trailer. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> uh, I've um, got a... You're out racing tomorrow, aren't you? On the, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have called it that, but it's... Uh, yeah, on the DC, uh, you're on the big bike and the twin. Yeah, yeah. So the uh, plan is to stay on it this time. So it's, yeah. uh, no, what, it was not graceful. It was, so yet again, thank you to <laughs> RST and the God love you, Piggy, and all the lads. I'll tell you what, the, all seriousness. So like, it's the first time I've ridden for a team. Like, um, And they're just say, saying that. No, the countings have been the exact same. And it's like, they just want you get on and go as fast as you can. And, yeah. and, and when someone says that to you, it's just, it's like a breath of fresh air. Like when, mm. you know, we've all started yeah. off at that privateer section and yeah. we think with your crash you can't afford it you can't keep going there's always that bit of edge but being able to hang around with an amazing bunch of people it's never just the people who just own the bikes it's the whole atmosphere so what yeah. we've been discussing mm -hmm. and that whole atmosphere of people going just go out and go as fast as you can and i'm i'm very very lucky that i've got the dc lads the counting teams and that. no very 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 lucky mm -hmm. like just, couple just, of going Great bunches of people. Oh, really? Are you? Yeah. You know, you yeah. just like you say. The, you know, once the tools get put away, the bikes are parked up. You get a couple of beers and you're having yeah. the crack, and that's what it's about. That's and, it, yeah. and what's refreshing after hearing your atmosphere, like you know, describing the atmosphere in the Fayo camp, is how that is still mm. there at to be without kissing your ass. It's at the highest level, and it's nice to hear that atmosphere is still ongoing at that level. It needs it's to pretty, be really. Yeah, because not all I'm, teams I'm, have not all teams have got it, have they? No, they haven't. No, but you, you've you've always got. I always think happy rider is a fast rider. Yeah. So if he's happy and he's confident and he's and he's happy with the people around him and the way that everybody's working, then you you feel confident. And eighty percent of racing's in the head. Mm. It's, it, that's you know, all, that is a happy, very good. That old happy rider, fast yeah. rider. It sounds a bit cliche, but it is. So, it is so, so true. true. You've getting the right mindset. You can do anything you want, mm -hmm. you know. So you just gotta go for it. Just, just a few uh, sort of quick fire questions. Um, if you, if you could have any bike that you've say worked on up on the mantelpiece, which which bike would it be? Not that Ducati. <laughs> you, uh, well, no, when that, he's absent, think of a think yeah, of one. That, uh, that would that would probably have been in the five. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, which one would it be? Oh, I suppose for one of the the R seventy one was a really pretty bike. That was a really classy bike. The R C thirty was a really good bike. Um, but I suppose ones that you get attached to and is the ones that you achieve the most with. I suppose, mm. isn't it? And for that, it'd probably be Beryl. Beryl. Ah, but there'll be a few yeah. people after <clears throat> after her. Yeah. So who? Where is she now then, Beryl? Where is she now? She's We've got uh, something beeping and flashing and tacking in. One of the cameras is full somewhere. I think it's this one, Chrissy. Oh, we'll, just, mm. we'll keep going. We're going to have to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. We've we'll, we'll managed to break it. Yeah, we're we'll still it. <laughs> so, yeah, Beryl, there must be a canny waiting list for Beryl there. Yeah, she's still at Louth. Still at Louth? Yeah, where, yeah. where is she hidden then? Is it in the garage or is it uh, at Peter's or where? Well, well, it was actually one of the guys who's now at Louth working with us and uh, helps out but he bought it right yeah. right what a piece so of history that. that's right, what yeah, I mean yeah I, yeah yeah, yeah she's fun. she was a bit it was a bit special that and there was there's certain things about it that were really satisfying as well you know like from my perspective really when you set up a bike for the tt you you spend your first night a few nights practice getting everything chassis wise all sorted and then I'll probably spend the rest of the week really calculating fueling mm. and monitoring every part to make sure that it's not starting to break down, you know, because all the voltages come up and all the results of every sensor that we've got on the bike. So you're looking at it, making sure that there's no changes there. And fueling, we have to get absolutely cock on because you want to get every last bit of power that you can out of it out of 24 litres over two laps and if I go too far one way he ends up getting parked at the Craig or yes, whatever you know. um, so you, you're really working it out and, and for me 
it was really satisfying really and pete's mentioned it i know on a couple of interviews but um when he came back in after he won and smashed the lap record and won the senior and the superstock race that that year both bikes it came in went into the winner's enclosure did a little burnout then they went from there round to the dyno for the verification and both bikes ran out of fuel when they got to third gear so they were that close that yeah. cock on that. yeah so that for me was a really. I bet you were stood there chuffed a bit, it's like, oh. yeah. Uh, yeah. I was, yeah. When, they, when, they to, when they told me, when they came back and said, what's up, what's up? Well, we've got to get more fuel, they've run out. You know, so they had to get another five days fuel. Oh, that, that so that was me. spot on for me. But like a lot of people say, well, if it had cocked up, he wouldn't have been the best, <laughs> <laughs> best person yeah. on there. And I'd have been <laughs> hiding down the seafront somewhere. Else. Aye, just, say, no. just a quick story to jump in on, on that topic. Last year, we were doing a little club race at Donington Park. And uh, we're in the same garage as Hutchie. More just yeah. cracking on. And I, I went out to do a race. And P Piggy had worked out my fuel and whatever. And uh, you've got you tell the story. Because uh, like, you'd done 10 laps, hadn't you? Bef yeah. 12 lappers before, weren't it? Yeah, they were all 12. And this was a 14 lapper, and I'd not looked on tight on events, so I'd like fueled for 12 lapper. So, why would you come up and said it? I don't I don't know, but he's come up to me and Oh, it's a 14 lapper, this isn't it? I went, it Didn't is it? It's 12. No, 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 it's a 14. He said, You winding me up? He went, Why would I be winding you up? I went, Right, uh, he says, You've done it for 12, haven't you? I went, Yeah, yeah. So I went over and looked at me, but worked it out, and I said, He'll be all right. I said, he'll just do it. He'll just do it. And you're like, went over to start and finish. You were way in lead, weren't you? Yeah. You went over to start and finish. And just as you went over to start and finish, like, boo. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at the chair and told you. <laughs> well, he said, I like, woke up. <laughs> you, were, you were cock on there, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was written, that was one of the things that Colin Chapman said, you know, you saw on Lotus Cats. Oh. That the ideal Formula One car falls to pieces as it crosses the finish line. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, this, this... Okay, okay. You know, I wanted to work with us. I'm not sure if I do. <laughs> <laughs> going over the senior one, boom, like that. Yeah, well, no, he's no. a man of his word. This, <laughs> this one's <laughs> not one of my main principles. <laughs> 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 this maybe won't be a, a, a short answer, but uh, for, for example, for every hour on track, Roughly, how many hours do you reckon you spend uh, analysing the data and working on the data side? For every hour? Mm -hmm. Every okay. hour of track time. It's hard to say, really. Um, if you look at a race weekend, I generally, I'm, a, I'm on it all day, every day through the weekend. So from once we set up, once we start on track, I generally have one day prior to that preparing all the mapping and strategies that I want to try and run through Friday and Saturday practice. And then I'm on it all weekend. So basically every time the bike rolls into the garage, I analyse the data, I'll be changing the mapping, changing the throttle, changing the engine braking to suit the circuit and the grip levels and that that we've got. Um, so you're on it constantly all weekend. Mm -hmm. you know really from getting up to going to bed really and then after the weekend i'll probably spend a full day plus maybe a couple of three evenings mm -hmm. so, so, hello, so i've got my other work and that yeah, sure. yeah. today, but two or three evenings we'll be expecting an invoice from Fayho <laughs> racing going you've robbed me an hour <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's it, I, no. <laughs> I had, I, had a, I had a question there, and uh, it's just slipped my mind. It was some. It was along the lines of, uh, uh, oh, "Come back to us in a second, because I." It, oh. That's what I've always thought would be good if you could. You know, we have five hundred days, like yeah. uh, Wayne Rainey, Kevin yeah. Schwanz. If them bikes could have had the same as a modern bike, you know, the technology, techno yeah, the technology. You know, for you, been a lot less injuries, oh, and, like, so and they'd animal, have been, yeah. oh, they'd been unbelievable. Yeah, that one. I mean, it, it would have good. It was a good era of racing anyway, I think. They're a horrible thing to ride, though. Yeah. yeah. But if they could have tamed them. Tabs, drinking whiskey, and off you go. Yeah, yeah but I mean... Like that. That. You've, got, you've got a wife, have you? Like <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> I've just thought of the, what I was going to say. Oh, yeah. as, as your job, I presume the, the best feeling must be when you're stuck on a problem and you're trying this, you're trying that, nothing seems to be working, and then you, you, you find like a setting 
or something you you try and it just transforms the bike and work what's the what's the biggest moment yeah. you've had where you've been yeah. stuck on something for a while and then you've just you've had like a massive breakthrough most weekends really right yeah there's always something you, you learn something new every weekend mm -hmm. i mean yeah i've been doing it a long time but i still hope that every weekend i will learn something new and i'll try something new um, so we're always experimenting and, it, and it's great really when you've got riders like Pete and, and Chavi who I'll say right this is what I want to do this is what I want to happen but also this is what might happen so I might say you know just cover the clutch going into turn three or something because I want to try something completely different and it, it might go a bit wrong but hopefully it's going to go right so you just you prepare them for what it's going to be so you're, you're always trying something new because you're always trying to get the edge you're always trying to be that little bit better and try and find something that creates a, a little bit more speed or a little bit more corner entry break, whatever just to try and make it that little bit faster but i don't think i've had that many points i often wake up middle of the night and get my laptop out and just go through something because you get an idea and once I've got an idea, I can't get back to sleep until I've that's, I tell that's you nice. so I have to do it. That's like the I definition go. of passion, isn't it? When you when you're waking up in the middle of the night with like solutions yeah. to problems, you know. For some people, work is you like have to do it. Mon like Monday, yeah. Friday night till five, and it's it's like an inconvenience. But racing's no, totally no. different. It's, racing's just your, your life, and that's it. You just, yeah, you just love it, and it's, and but as far as uh, satisfaction goes, probably the best satisfaction I get is when the rider goes well because when people are patting him on the back it means that I'm doing all right so but I'm, I'm quite happy sat at the back knowing that you're part he, of the story yeah he knows I am I don't need anybody else to know that I am mm -hmm. I'd sooner be out the back and out the photographs and not really that's why I was surprised when he come what to talk to me because I'm not normally that I was about so to say, I try and keep quiet, really. We've just ruined that bubble for you. They'll be pushing Peter out oh, the way yes. now, going, <laughs> there's, there's Pete from Chase the Race, and no. all of a sudden, just boof, get out of the way of Peter. My, my <laughs> life's never been the same. No. <laughs> He's got a stick behind his mantle for the women, the entourage of women booning down the door. I, I tell you, what, I, I love it when I'm with Piggy and people recognise him off the podcast and shout, Piggy! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just find it, I find it so. Piggy, 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 love your word, Piggy. Love your word. Piggy, Piggy, yeah. lives, Piggy lives in a in a world with no social media. No, like, do you know, like, right, yeah. so do you know how we're so yeah. accustomed to say Facebook? Yeah. I don't know if you're on like Instagram, Twitter, and all of that sort of stuff, but no. I, I, I go on Facebook a little bit, but you open the laptop, Motec, yeah, Motec. I, yeah, I, <laughs> I literally don't have time. I keep saying because um, it's like with work and that, I put stuff, up, little bits on Facebook, but I don't put anything much on. Mm -hmm. I do. Other people tend to put more on about what I've done. You know, they'll go away and ride the bike, sort of thing, and yeah. they'll put something on, and it, it brings in work for me, which is great. You know, it's all advertising and that. But yeah, I'm not. I'm not massive on it i do enjoy it but as, as far as doing like i mean icky's on, he has to be on it all the time you yeah. know and you get that many dicks it's yeah. part of the yeah. job now, yeah. it? it is it is all part of it you know the, the social media side of things is massive isn't it and in, in terms of like plugging plugging your business if people do want to get in touch with you what's the best best contact or do you have a website or? yeah 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 i have a website and Mobile. <laughs> He's not giving it out though. <laughs> <laughs> so call, call me. Oh my God. <laughs> if, people, if, if people want some work, just uh, like Google. We've got to give a, a way for people to get in touch with you if you want the business. So, like, what's the best way people can get in touch? Well, do you, Facebook or phone or email. Just whatever really Peter Clifford on Facebook and uh, Piggy I've booked booked a few months in advance with the old uh, drives ah uh, yeah we're up to about November we yeah. work something like that that's, yeah. when, that's when you know you're you're a man in demand isn't yeah. it when you, what's I mean, the what's the um, supply like I've heard there's been a few supply issues with HS2 are, we, are you doing okay for it? yeah in a minute but uh, cement there's a shortage on cement uh, so it, it's sort of like everything you because bl your blocks and your slabs all made with cement but Manufacturers are struggling to get it as well, so yeah, it could be pretty bad. Yeah, booked up to did you say November? November, yeah. And if anyone wants any drives in the sort of Doncaster area, it's Haycott Block Pavement. Yeah, <laughs> is yeah. That what your Wait, is called? no, yeah. no Haycock. job too big or small. No, yeah, that's it. Haycock. We do it all. Haycock. Cot. 
Really? See, smut all the time, innit? It is, yeah. It twists everything. <laughs> Filth. <laughs> just lower its tone. Why do you just call it piggies? No, you can't. You need to change it now, man. Inland Revenue <laughs> wouldn't even think about investigating that, would they? Also, like, while, piggies, while piggies, we're on this topic, baby. can I just say, <laughs> some, sometimes when I first introduce you to people, pe- people are a bit hesitant to call you piggy themselves because oh. they sort of see it as maybe like a bit disrespectful. Yeah, yeah. But can we just clarify to pe- the fans out there that you are, it's piggy. Yeah, it, piggy, yeah, yeah. Not in front of yeah. your man, but... No, other no, than no my mother don't like it, but yeah. that's only one, yeah. <laughs> Other than in front of your mum, it's piggy. You don't. Uh... And what, while we're on about technology, I, oh, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a bit behind on these uh, podcasts because I can't. I don't always get a chance to listen to them. Right. And it won't play if I play it on me, like through my Bluetooth on me in my pickup. It it won't play sort of like loud enough. We've had a, a, if if anyone else is having issues like this, please like either send us a message or things because we need to get that sorted. But can I just tell you? Oh, go yeah, on, no, because on, I'm on that Spotify. You said to go on that, didn't you? And, mm-hmm. But it's still not loud enough. Just, yeah. just a quick one as well. Um, I was I was down at I think it was Donington last week, and uh, do you know Gabriel, who I, who was oh, bike I was uh, racing uh, racing last year. Gabriel came in and he said, "What uh, what's going on with the podcasts?" And I said, well, "What do you mean?" He said, "Well." because he knows I edit them he said like what are you doing with editing it's it's like you can hardly understand it and I I said oh that's weird like I always listen at the back and like I I didn't think my editing skills were that bad so I said get your your phone out so I got his phone out and went on the uh, the Apple podcast thing and I pressed play and it was (laughs) and I looked down he had his own times (laughs) two You literally, you kind of do a thing. It's just... It's, 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 it's like that in our race truck with the paddies. Now, like, yeah. <laughs> they're, they are, they're under mile an hour, aren't they? <laughs> so uh, if, it, if anyone else is struggling with... Uh, not have got a Spaniard and a, and a <laughs> smattering of Irish, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's good fun. Is, is Javi's English pretty good, though, isn't it? Better well, than ours, mate. <laughs> but he, he's, pretty, he's actually... His wife's an English teacher. <laughs> Funny enough, yeah. In in Spain, yeah, in uh, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Also, oh, yeah. So when he gets interviewed and stuff, he always says like sounds. Yeah, yeah. His missus behind him going, "You didn't say that quite right there." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, brilliant, but man. I think I think that uh, sort of covers everything. Have we got anything else to, to tie? Have you got any more, qu- any quick fire questions that you would like? To um, no, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Absolutely. Th- like, it always happens that we end up leaving the studio or anything. I should have asked that. I should have asked yeah, this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There you go. But honestly, thank you so much for taking the time there. Okay. No, come on it. this and we'll, we'll get you on it. Good, yeah. We'll get you on again and we'll, we'll um, mm. get some more questions. It's been funny. Uh, you two have never really like sort of met or like, no, no, we've sort of done bits of we joked, we passed been. in a lot and we've joked and sort of yeah. met up and chatted yeah. a few times. You sat there like, sat there like, two, together, like yeah. two old... Like, we have the we're just sitting in pubs and airports. We just get a wave in airport, yeah, don't we? You don't yeah, get yeah. a couple of bounces. You do actually. <laughs> 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 I thought you were say a couple of bookends. <laughs> <laughs> You're not coming in with them shoes, sunshine. Yeah, yeah. Do you want them? No, I see. Show your wristband. Thanks so much for taking the time to come on. Obviously, big thanks to our sponsors, Colchester Kawasaki, all of our patrons, and uh, yeah, Piggy, thanks, thanks for joining us. And uh, good, good luck with uh, obviously Peter tomorrow and the rest of the team on uh, when is it Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. By the time this podcast goes out, it'll be after the test, so yeah. that'll be history. Yeah. But um, yeah, all the best, everyone, and uh, good luck tomorrow, Dom. Keep it. Yeah. Back. Oh God, I need it. God, I need it. So there we go, Grant. But uh, not. Like he says, thank you to everyone. And then yeah, yeah. catch you next time. Really enjoyed it. Thank you. Soon. Thanks very much. Thank Cheers. <laughs> Click, buy, deliver with remote purchasing from the two time motorcycle news dealer of the year, Colchester Kawasaki. Proud sponsors of Chasing the Racing.